it might not be london as some claim but the architecture of kolkata is a big part of its charm and not many know that some of kolkata's major landmarks were built not by the british but by jews the jewish community in calcutta still owns three synagogues three schools and the cemetery in narkel langa jews go anywhere for trade so the jews who came to kolkata the first jew to come to calcutta that was uh, shalom obadia kohen came for trade they moved between bombay colombo calcutta uh, rangoon singapore singapore hong kong hong kong shanghai and all the way down to jakarta small merchant ships that went up and down doing trade in timber in in animals and birds and uh, plants at its largest which was during the second world war we were between 5 and 6000 <laughs> about 22 to 23 of us Immediately after the Second World War, there were three things that happened. One was that places, colonies like Australia and Canada, opened their doors to immigration. Then you had Indian independence, and the year after that, you had the establishment of the State of Israel. Business people and landowners and things like that were. afraid that they might their properties their businesses might be nationalized and they might not get a uh, satisfactory compensation for that they sold out and left some of them gave up very good jobs here to go and live in um, basically in tents in israel in the early years jews at this time lived in the area that is bounded by the synagogues the masjid uh bo barracks and uh, the police station there was china para the jewish area parsis and armenians this was what the what the british called the gray area the black area was indian white was european and the middle people were gray came to a point when one jewish girl was nearly baptized you forget that this british time of proselytizing was big The Insular Jewish Society built their own schools, opened their own clubs, and kept their social mingling strictly kosher. And in the 1940s, when the country burned, they were left untouched. In 1946, I went to New Delhi. That was like today going to the moon for a girl, a Jewish girl. What do you want to go to Delhi of all places? So far away, 1,000 miles away. Took me two and a half days to get to Delhi. I saw everything. I saw the bloodshed, I saw the partition, I saw the famine of Bengal and uh, for me it was very impressionable because it was impressionable age. I saw great Calcutta killing here when Gandhi ji came to try to stop it. It was something I never forget this scene. There was a pregnant woman, heavily pregnant, and she was on the road and there was a mob around her and the man had a knife to her stomach. and he was just about to kill her and i ran out and i tried to save her me and my brother and they we were so we, we were so naive because we knew that they would not touch us we were not one bit frightened because it was it told us ye aap ko ladai nahi hai i'd never forget what i saw and i often wonder what happened to that woman flas elemen lives with a daughter yale in a house that's almost like a museum of jewish artifacts Given the state of their numbers, Yale decided to create a digital archive of the Jews of Kolkata. Calcutta is in my blood. So when I retired prematurely, I made a direct beeline to get back to Calcutta and love being here. Yale Silliman is a fourth generation Calcuttan Jew who unlike her peers decided to come back. But for the rest, Kolkata was just another stopover on their journey. So what happens to the Jewish heritage after them? We have just set up 
about six months ago, a controlling trust, which will be like a holding company for all our institutions. And I was in the States a month ago trying to find uh, possibly an organization there that might be interested in supervising what goes on in Calcutta. So we are also looking towards the communities that still exist in Singapore and Hong Kong, which are much closer to us. We are also looking to, towards them to see whether they might be interested in and capable of supervising what would be happening here. And that's the tragic truth. The last remnants of Jews on Calcutta's soil will be looked after by those sitting in foreign lands. From the time of the Romans to the Babylonians to the Greeks to the Germans to everybody has done something against the Jews, but not the Indians. Indians can hold a India can hold a head high and proud to say that we were never, never discriminated against. And not only that, Jews have had big positions. General Jacob became the governor of two states. General J.K. was the army general, he was a Jew. D.J. Cohen was a judge in the high court. One thing that living in India gives you is a strong sense of possibly fatalism. The Bengali has an expression for it. Uh, if it is our fate to be the last flicker of the Jewish candle in Calcutta, that's it. It happens everywhere. There are. And many synagogues have been destroyed and damaged. At least here, ours are still standing in spite of the ASI. Largely that it is the city's loss because the city is losing its cosmopolitan edge. But beyond that, as far as we are concerned, c'est la vie. Yes, it is the city's loss. A city that became home to its guests from Baghdad now holds on to the remains of the last Jews of Kolkata. If you like the story of the last Jews of Calcutta, then please hit like and share the video.